Fifteen years ago, it would have been impossible for most Rwandans to even imagine a scene like this. These men working side by side to construct a house are both perpetrators and survivors of the 1994 genocide. <laughs> they live in the village of Ramagana, which is about 90 minutes outside the capital Kigali, and are all members of the Uyagi Tuvindimwe self-help group. <laughs> Uyagi to Vindimwe means we are brothers in the Kinyarwanda language. The group's aim is to unite the community by helping each other address social problems like inadequate housing and poverty. It's easy to just say, okay, people should live in peace with each other in Rwanda. Words are nothing. You can't talk to a homeless person or an orphan or someone who has not eaten for days or months about peace and reconciliation. You have to make a difference through your actions, and that is why we are building such houses. 27-year-old Theonest Mzungu lost his entire family in the genocide. There are still people who are in denial and don't want to accept that there actually was genocide in this country. There are those who do not want to accept that they did take part and others who feel like there is no point in remembering all the people we lost. But I think that through our initiative, somehow people will slowly come to understand what happened in 1994 and ensure that it never happens again. Jean-Baptiste Singirigabo, on the other hand, was only 12 years old when he took part in the killings. He spent 13 years in prison and was only released after confessing his crimes under the traditional gachacha court system Rwanda uses to try genocide suspects. <laughs> The reason I came to help in building this house is because of the guilt and the shame I feel. The young man we are building this house for is now an orphan. He was his father's firstborn, but I denied him the right to live and see him, so I had to help him since I killed his whole family. It's the least I can do, really. Uyagi Tuvindimwe was formed two years ago but has only managed to build three houses so far since they rely on member contributions and private donations. One of the homes belongs to Bernard Munez Ikwie. My parents killed in the genocide, but I did not take part because I was only eight years old at the time. But after the war ended and the new government was formed, my parents went to Congo and left me here. It reached a point I wanted to change my name because everyone knew what my father had done. Fatuma Ndagiza is the executive secretary for the National Unity and Reconciliation Commission set up by the government in 1999. There are steps, but of course, we still have challenges. We still have key spoilers in our society, people who still harbor the genocide ideology, uh, people who are still diehards, and I think it's not only in the Rwandan society, it's in every society, people who still have hatred in them. So I think again, um, and that's why there is always justice, so much as we are doing reconciliation, but of course we know this is not paradise. Damasen Rwasa Mirera is a history professor at the University of Rwanda. He says that although Rwanda's people still have a lot of healing to do, groups like Uyagi to Vindimwe have set the ball rolling in the right direction. We have to keep educating the population without giving up because we owe it to ourselves to never go back to where we have been. The syllabus in our education sector has to be changed so that our children will be able to start school and learn the right things, not learn about what ethnic group they belong to. It's only been 15 years since the genocide took place, and we have somehow made progress. And if we do continue with the same zeal, in about a hundred years, Rwanda will be a different country from what it's known. We have to leave as Rwandans and forget about being Tutsi or Hutu. We also asked people in Kigali what they thought of the various ongoing initiatives to promote peace and reconciliation among the country's 8 million people. 
ibyiza mbona nuko barushaho gukangurira what I like is the fact that they give the genocide participants a chance to come forward and admit their crimes and explain where exactly it is that they buried their victims. That is when you feel like there has been true forgiveness. If someone does not entirely accept his mistakes, it will always hinder the reconciliation process. Reconciliation is possible. The problem was that people used to ridicule each other, but now all Rwandans have decided to agree and live in peace. It's usually easier to destroy something than to build it up. The genocide in Rwanda shattered various levels of the country's social fabric, economic and political foundations. The various efforts to repair the damage are challenging, frustrating and drawn out. But people like Luyagi Tuvindimwe are determined to try anyway, one break at a time.